Okay. But since I'm here, I want to present to you this keg of dynamite. Our mother, Mother Clee. Thank you, Minister Shivers, for those kind words. Uh, I've been for the dynamite. <laughs> Give an to God and to our pastor, to all of you that are here. I just thank and praise God for this wonderful opportunity that he has given me. For whenever God gives you a chance to stand before his people, that's an honor. I don't take it lightly. And I just thank him for choosing me. And I want to thank Minister May Francis Williams. For this was her Sunday. She was supposed to preach today. But she felt like she wasn't strong enough to deliver the message. When you deliver a message, it takes something out of you. Amen. If you don't believe it does, uh, you look at our pastor how he sweat. <laughs> he doesn't press pat, he sweat. They have to bring him a towel because it brings a lot out of you. And I just want to thank her for thinking on me. <laughs> thinking on me and asking the pastor if I could substitute for her. And I want to thank the pastor for saying yes, because he could have said no. <laughs> he could have said no, but he gave her permission, and I just thank you for this opportunity. Let us pray. Father, I pray that let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our lesson scripture is in our bulletin. And it's um, St. John 4, 28 and 29. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Yeah. And from those words, I would like to use for a thought a life-changing encounter with Jesus. Right. Encounter means to meet somebody or something usually, unexpectedly, and briefly. Mm -hmm. And these verses of scripture were written by St. John, uh -huh. one of the 12 disciples, and one of the members of the inner three that went with Jesus on special occasion, Peter, James, and John. Now, we don't know this woman's name or age, but her conversation with the Lord is his longest one-on-one -on -one chat record in the scripture. All right. And that's reason enough to give our sister from Samaria a first look. All right. Now, it's high noon. Jesus was tired from traveling, and he chose a sensible rest stop Jacob's well outside the town of Sychar while waiting for his disciples to go into town for food when our unnamed woman appeared with a clay jar. Mm -hmm. Now, this was an extraordinary woman. Not so much because she was a Samaritan. Not so much because she was a woman, but because she was a Samaritan. Of, of the race of people that the Jews utterly despised right. as having no claim on their God, but because she was an outcast right. and looked down upon by her people. Right. And this is evidenced by the fact that she came alone to draw water from the community well. And during biblical times, Drawing water and chatting at the well was a social high point of a woman. All right. It was a time to visit, to exchange news, to idle away a little time gossiping. Uh -huh. And how this woman was ostracized. She was marked as immoral. An unmarried woman living openly with the fifth in a series of men. All right. Now, 
Jesus' conversation with the Samaritan and a woman, no less, was unusual for that time. For from a Jewish perspective, there were three strikes against this woman. First of all, Jews weren't supposed to speak to Samaritans. And men weren't permitted to address women without their husbands. And a rabbi had no business speaking to a shady lady such as this. <laughs> now, we don't know how far this woman had come to draw water. All right. We don't know how heavy or how large her pot was. All right. And she wasn't expecting anyone to be there at that time. All right. And she found this man sitting on the well. The one who measured the water in the hollow of his hand, and he was thirsty. And Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Now, he didn't ask her name. He didn't ask if she was tired. In fact, he didn't even ask her to give him a drink. He told her, give me a drink. And I can imagine she got mad. I can imagine her blood pressure went up. She took on an attitude. She took a step back. Put her hands on her head. Look Jesus in the eye. She shook her head. And she said, how is it that thou being a Jew, ask and drink of me? Which I'm a woman of Samaria. Yeah. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Right. She played the racist card. Right. <laughs> this woman first confronts the encounter in racial terms. Yeah. And she begins with the question of racial prejudice. All right. But Jesus. Uh, yeah. But Jesus. Yeah. Jesus looked beyond her faults. Right. And he saw her need. Right. He saw a woman bearing a dry, empty pitcher, uh -huh. a telling symbol of her parched, barren heart, uh -huh. lonely, scarred by women, right. and used by men. Right. And Jesus looked on her with compassion, hey. love in his heart. Hey. And with the tender voice, he said, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. And Jesus answered and said unto her again, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into, into everlasting life. And instead of insisting, she poured him a drink. The Lord offered her, uh, 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 made her an offer. She couldn't refuse. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, he made her, see the water that Jesus was given was living water. Yeah. And it's living in the sense that it's life giving. Yeah. And that which Christ gives is not something to keep us alive, yeah. but something to make us alive. All right. And this water of grace and truth, which comes by Jesus Christ, is the water which gives and is satisfied. Yeah. And it's not given merely to refresh but to regenerate. All right. And the elements of eternal life and life are in him. All right. You see, Jesus is a well that never runs dry. Right. And nobody right. can exalt him. All right. His grace will always be sufficient. Yeah. His love will always be abundant. Yeah. His mercy will always be unlimited. Yeah. His peace will always be unsurpassed. Yeah. And his joy will always be unspeakable. All right. And the power will always be overwhelming. Yeah. And his riches will always be unsearchable. 
And his words were so powerful. Yeah. It cut away her hostility. All right. It cut away her anger. Yeah. It cut away her prejudice. Yeah. It made her hard heart soft. Yeah. And it changed her attitude. All right. You see, for Hebrew 4 and 12 tells us, for the word of God is quick. We 